Another way to say that is that all human beings are, we're creatures that perform creative actions. Mm. And sometimes those right. actions have permanent, have long standing consequences, sometimes right. they don't. Right. Sometimes they're very temporal. Yeah. Um, so, so anyway, that, that's sort of the background to what I was going to say um, in answer to your, the question that you opened up uh, about this story that there was a, that figuration died it was it was yeah. killed off right yeah. and then people had to like resuscitate it somehow like yeah, we, yeah. like this is the story and this is a story that a lot of people within i i like to use the word representational by the way i yeah. like that i prefer that um because i think it's a little broader and it's a little, broader yeah it, it, yeah it's a little broader and it's a little it oddly it's broader and more precise at the same time right. uh but um it uh i think i think one of the reasons that that story has become prominent among people who are involved in represent the sort of representation utilizing uh techniques from the 19th century so for example or, is that the reason they say this because the kind of representation that they do maybe, wasn't uh, anyway, you know, that, it just seemed that, to be less that particular opportunity so like i think you mentioned this was, in was your previous podcast set aside for a while as well but the reality is if you look at if you look at um if you look at art during that period who else was making art at the time of the abstract expressions? Jacques Yeah. Germain Richier, yeah. uh, uh, Ewan Uglo, Lucian Freud, yeah. Francis Bacon, Francis, Francis Bacon, who famously artist. called Jackson Pollock that lace maker. He like derisively <laughs> called him a lace maker. He said, he's not an artist, he's a lace maker. That's, yeah, that's, 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 the way, that's the way Francis Bacon would have. Would have that's stayed. a funny but, like, I, insult, but also compliment. <laughs> I know it's, I like it's good. It's good. Yeah, uh, but not. The, I don't. Just I, the fine arts side. You know, the, don't forget that's, that's the golden that's age right. of American illustration. You know, there's a that's ton right. of incredible, you know, that's representational right. illustrators that are working at the time that people are holding in their hands in a magazine. Yeah. And so you're talking about gallery artists. You're yeah. talking about museum artists. The amount of people that hold a magazine and see art is tr- huge. The, the, the numbers it's way are bigger. Is way bigger. It's way bigger. Than let's, go, let's, go even, let's go. Let's go. Let's go even bigger, a big, a even bigger form of representation that became prominent was film. Right, exactly. I mean, yeah. it, 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 you know, nobody's watching a film of just like abstract shapes sort of right, like, or right. like random shapes showing up on the screen. Stan Brackett, people, people watch that film. You know, <laughs> just right. relatively well, no one, right? So yeah, yeah right. Relatively compared speaking, to a relatively speaking. compared to Casablanca, right. nobody's right. watching that, right? So right. it's super right. meaningful right. stuff. Right. It's a super meaningful shift. The fact that it became a cultural touchstone is super meaningful. But I like, you know, I like that you use the word representation. I like that word too. And I've been thinking a lot about this uh, and and trying to figure out some formats to investigate this more thoroughly. Because I I find like, you know, in my conversation anyway, representation is a very important word because it includes like Mark Rothko, for instance, who's sometimes representing seascapes in his super abstract way. But I find that if you go far enough into abstraction, like um, Anish Kapoor, for instance, like I use his yeah. um, cloud gate as an example, yeah. his cloud gate is so divorced from representation because it's not trying to represent anything at all, that it actually right. is just a thing. It, it's as close right. to being perfectly realistic as possible because it's not in any right. way trying That's to right. represent something else. So it exists on its own terms to represent yep. itself in its singularity, and that's it. So, so the the word representation. I don't know if it's the most useful word to describe someone mm. like Anish Kapoor or that sure. or that artwork. Sure. But if you are discussing representation, you can't exactly exclude like that end of the spectrum because yeah. it exists, yeah. you know. And to think right. that to think that somehow representation you know, uh, doesn't end at photorealism, but like, you know, allows just two degrees to the left or right of that. Like, you know, come on, yeah. representation yeah. is, is anything and everything in a way. <laughs> so. right. And so is abstraction. And this, right. this is, this is why I think, you know, I, I kind I really wish there was a reframing of the conversation about these yeah. matters, because yeah. I think the question isn't whether somebody's making representational work or non-representational right. work or abstraction or non, right. Yeah. The question is what, what form of those two things are yeah. they taking, yeah. right? That's it. Like, what yeah. form of abstraction am I employing? Yeah. And what form of representation am I employing? Yeah. And how are those two things marrying 
yeah. in such a way that provides the viewer with a new experience right. to both of those things. Yeah. That's it. 